Assassin's Creed Odyssey is a good game. I know I wasn't 100% optimistic going in, and I don't even say this grudgingly. I'm about 10 hours into Odyssey, and the game's actually pleasantly surprising me. It's certainly no price piece, and I definitely don't regret my reservations on the way in. As far as Assassin's Creed is concerned, it's lacking a little so far, but at the same time, it's still connected to Assassin's Creed. Apparently that's enough for Ubisoft. Either way, as much as I'd appreciate more, there's stuff that's definitely making this game seem worthwhile. As a brief disclaimer, this is not a review. These are my initial thoughts to serve as a little bit of a buying guide based on what I've played, because I know a lot of people will be eager to play the game before I can even possibly fathom getting a review out. The game is very much so similar to Origins, with some more refined combat, some more variations, more customization, open world naval, like the good old Black Flag days, and a massive world to explore, one which I've barely chipped the surface of. In fact, the open world's so big that it actually gives me anxiety. <laughs> of course, the game's more focused on its RPG elements as it features more than even Origins did, with romances, dialogue options and multi-choice outcomes, with a superior levelling system and better customization. so it's fair to say that in this video they're going to take more or less centre stage. Do I or do I not get the romance shenanigans out of the way first? Buckle up boys, you're in for a fucking treat. So far I've encountered three possible romances. One was a fairly decent looking maiden who could have easily waxed Alexios' spear if you get me, and then there were the other two. A relatively feisty old woman who looks like she spent the last 30 years of her life brawling her own coffin, and some virtually obese blacksmith. Naturally, of the three, I only round up shagging one. You can guess which. Obviously the granny mate. I smashed that haunted pussy so hard that I think I got an extinct STD. To top it all off, when I was done, her husband actually paid me for it. Mate, if you don't want to fuck her, see a divorce lawyer, you shady coffin dodging cuck. Honestly, I'm glad that the camera stayed outside for that, because I think I'd have mental scarring if it didn't. But this one encounter has more or less summed up my experience so far with Odyssey. This might not be the most Assassin's Creed Assassin's Creed's been, but it's definitely the most random. I'd honestly be surprised if there wasn't a romance option with a fucking goat at some point, which is frankly more my brother's cup of tea than mine. But I think you get it, let's get off the romance page, fucking hell. Fortunately, the dialogue options in this game are a bit more variant than yes and maybe later, being able to ask for pay for your services, make decisions that affect the direction of certain quests or how people react to you and ask questions to further understand your current objectives, which would make a dialogue system that rivaled The Witcher, but then there's the voice acting to consider, and that's my biggest criticism with the game. I understand why Alexios or Cassandra might be poorly acted because they've basically got to emulate each other's emotions and create an identical experience no matter who you choose to play as. But the rest of the cast isn't so great either. If there were a game I would be able to compare the voice acting to it wouldn't be something like Horizon Zero Dawn or The Witcher 3 where it's great. It'll be more along the lines of Skyrim or Oblivion where it's atrocious. Do you get to the cloud district very often? district Do you get to the cloud district very often? Of course you do. Do you get what am I saying? Fuck up, Jesus fucking Christ! As you can imagine, it really takes the drama out of the game. I feel as if it's suffice to say that the voice acting is poor. To add to the whole thing, lip sync is a bit naff, but that's not as bad as having a stale cast, which is probably my biggest gripe with this game so far. Anyways, as far as peeves go, they're rather isolated. The open world itself is filled with quests and things to do. I'm quite pleased with how big the world is, and you don't find yourself doing fuck all for too long, though in the 10 hours I've played, I've done two quests that were essentially us fetching Viagra for undesirables, so I'm not entirely sure how many of those there will be for the rest of the game. Then there was a quest in which I rescued a guy and he seemed relatively okay, only for him to just keep heel over and die at the end which was super random but fuck it I shagged an old lady because I thought it was funny I don't really have the grounds to say anything. Quests aren't too dissimilar from Origins besides from obviously the multi-choice and the dialogue options which add a whole new dynamic to it all. Then there were the quests with possible romances and there were so many dialogue options that lead down that path that you seem like a fucking insult. I bet you would like to see the Spear of Leonidas in bed. Beyond side quests, there are other things to do in the world, there are notice boards in which you can pick up more quests and things to do, which is also quite interesting, such as hunt down bandits or mercenaries. Obviously there are the forts and shit like that, there's hunting, treasure hunting, caves, things like that, naval of course, plenty to do. Like I did gloss over before, the open world can seem a little bit overwhelming to begin with because it's that fucking big, which makes me both anxious and excited for the next 100 hours of gameplay. On the topic of story, I'm not going to say anything because you can find that out for yourself. 
itself. I will say that it's not completely uninteresting, and it's far from the worst story that Assassin's Creed has thrown at us these past few years. Though I'm not stupidly deep into that right now, and it could very easily drop like a cricket player having a stroke. Gameplay wise, as I mentioned before, the game is very similar to Origins with all the aforementioned upheavals, specifically naval gameplay and the open world being the big difference. The naval runs similar to Black Flag except optimised more for the ancient setting. It's challenging and yields a similar system of rewards through plunder as well as being able to find snazzy gear on the ships you choose to board which is a bonus. Use the rewards of plunder and things like that to upgrade your ship and other things at the same time. All in all it's a welcome addition but it does come with the same tedious feeling I personally found in Black Flag, like a levelling curve ball and chain. As far as levelling up and skills go, they've ditched the skill graph and gone from the skill trees which is a lot simpler and easier to follow and you can tell where your skill points are actually going and what they're leading to a few more points down the line. Customization is also superior to Origins, it's similar to Unity in a way but at the same time it has the same issue that Unity had which is Certain things look good but have shit stats, and other things have great stats but look shit. Combat is also improved upon from Origins in my opinion, it's a little bit more challenging and seems a bit more down to earth as you can't exactly fly all over the place like you can in Origins where everything seems to be like you're gliding across the surface of ice, and you have more abilities at your disposal to use in combat which can be very very helpful. The selling point of conquest battles isn't as glamorous as it's made out to be, they do actually feel kind of tedious to be honest with you, but they are doable and they aren't made out to be impossible like they were at the fucking EGX demo. Jesus Christ. Graphically, the game looks just as good as Origins with some amazing lighting, some dense shrubbery and all that lovely stuff that made Origins look good. Minus the pyramids and the sand and that mystical element and plus loads of Greek shit. Yeah, it's nice. I still have no idea where the statues are there, but I believe it's there to tempt us to climb onto the penis. Get me to that dick and balls. <laughs> right, let's go. Oh. Probably not climb on this. <laughs> okay, yeah, well... You did. I don't want to know what type of fucking AIDS gives you moss on your dick, but this statue's really having a tough go of it. I don't know how I got onto the topic of statues with penises while talking about graphics, but ultimately, graphically, the game is satisfactory, it looks really nice, and the photo mode is also pretty good. It's more or less the exact same photo mode from Origins, but it looks a bit cleaner with how the UI is when you're doing your photo mode shit. <laughs> Because I'm playing this on PC, I've got to take into account PC performance. Now when it comes to Ubisoft games, I always hold the philosophy of expect the worst. I expected this game to run a lot worse than it actually does. It's a pretty smooth experience. I don't really experience very many lag spikes at all. Of course there's the odd one because that's just how PC gaming goes. That and I'm pretty sure technology completely hates me. But no, Odyssey is a smooth experience. And even when Origins lags out when I try to stream it on PC, this game runs completely smooth. As for glitches, I haven't experienced very many so they're quite minimal by the looks of it. But I'm sure more will pop up as I continue to play the game. Glitches just happen. It's not a Ubisoft thing, it's just a gaming thing, you're never going to get rid of them all, are you? So to sum the performance up, I give this a pass for PC. I can't vouch for how it runs on Xbox One, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 4 Pro or Xbox One X just yet, though I am sure I'll wind up playing this game on PS4 Pro at some point. All in all, from what I've played so far, Odyssey is definitely a fun game you can sink a good few hours into. As far as Assassin's Creed elements go, which I think I should mention before we get off of this video, it is rather limited, but in the same respect, they are kind of present. Of course, there is a bit of modern day there as well, which is definitely connected. I won't say anything about that, I'll leave that for you to enjoy. But what really confuses me about Assassin's Creed elements in the historical part is it's hard to tell what's canon and what's not because of the multi-choices and things like that. But I shan't complain, beyond this, so far, I'm really enjoying this game. Obviously my opinion is subject to change, like the rest of the game could be wank for all I know, I haven't played it yet, this is just a little guide so people who want to buy it or maybe are a bit unsure can see if it's worth their money based on my opinion, which is based on my experience with the first 10 hours of the game. So to reiterate, this is not a review, this is just raw thoughts. Mate, I can make that into a series, raw thoughts. Ah, fuck it, somebody's probably already done it. But based on my thoughts so far, do I recommend this game? I do believe that if you're thinking about buying this game, that it definitely won't be a waste of money, but if you go in expecting some groundbreaking Assassin's Creed experience, you're probably going to be disappointed. However, if you fancy a fun RPG in the Assassin's Creed universe with limited elements, then this game probably won't disappoint you there, as it is a decent RPG. Nothing super duper amazing so far, but nothing terrible. But anyways, if you've played this game, be sure to let me know what you think down in the comments section. Also, thanks to Ubisoft for popping me a code a few hours before it will become available for Gold Edition owners anyway, which I had to purchase because I didn't believe I would get a code. 
so I'm a bit upset. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to go ahead, leave a like, subscribe, share. Of course, let me know what you think down in the comments section. That is key as always. Hopefully this video has helped you come to a decision as to whether or not you want to buy the game. If not, I do apologize. Be sure to go ahead and drop me a follow on Twitter as well. I'd really appreciate that. And I will see you all very soon with another video at some point.